and welcome to today's wrestling news. My name is Phil Chambers and I am working on my own, unfortunately, on this Saturday. Ah, for fuck's sake. Anyway, today is Wrestle Kingdom Day, so I'm going to try and make this quick because I kind of just want to get back to my desk and uh, carry on watching that. Anyway, if you want to skip to any of the stories, the time codes are down in the description below. And while you're down there, press the subscribe button, press the like button and do a comment letting us know what you think. It really does help. Anyway, the top story today on SmackDown last night, we had three huge returns. The first off was Sheamus finally coming back into the ring. Uh, we haven't seen him in ring uh, since the SmackDown after WrestleMania 35. It's been almost a year. Uh, obviously been doing the promos about how he's going to come back and beat up all the little guys. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much exactly what he did. Shorty G was having a match with Dash Wilder of the Revival. He got him in the ankle lock and then he beat him. Uh, and then after the match, the Revival were beating him up afterwards. And then all of a sudden, Sheamus' music hit. Fella! And then he wanders down to the ring, the Revival kind of just bugger off, they're done with this. And then Sheamus just bro kicks Shorty G right in the face and then just kind of stands over him for a while. But that's it, Sheamus is back on SmackDown. And honestly, I'm kind of really looking forward to just a match between Sheamus and Shorty G. I just think that's going to be really, really entertaining. So I, for one, I'm very glad that Sheamus is back. I just really like him. I think he's a really underrated talent and I just like watching him kick the crap out of people, really. But that wasn't the only return because uh, The Miz was wrestling Kofi Kingston. He lost, but he kind of snapped after the match and beat him up. Uh, the crowd was chanting, you suck, as he wandered out. And then uh, Kathy Kelly went backstage to try and get an interview with him. But uh, she was at The Miz's uh, dressing room, but it wasn't The Miz that opened the door. It was actually John Morrison. He didn't exactly do much. He just kind of said that The Miz had nothing more to say tonight and then shut the door and that was it. A kind of underwhelming return for John Morrison, I guess, after sort of hyping him up. We've not been sure what they're going to be doing with him. And I guess they're just putting him back with The Miz for a bit. Maybe it's a return of the dirt sheet. Who knows? I mean, that was really entertaining back in the day, but you'd kind of hope for them to move on to something different. But who knows uh, where this is going. If, if this is The Miz is going back to being a heel, I am hugely on board with that because I just think he's much, much, much better as a heel. Uh, and we'll just have to wait and see where Jim Morrison goes. And then finally, the main event of the evening was uh, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler taking on Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Obviously, Daniel Bryan's going to be facing uh, The Fiend at the Royal Rumble for the Universal Championship. And in the match, The Fiend came out and he attacked Daniel Bryan and then just kind of disappeared afterwards, which gave uh, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler the chance to attack Roman Reigns yet again. They got out the chains, they were going to tie him up and do the whole dog food shower bath thing, whatever it is that they do, that really obsessed with dog food it's really really strange uh, but to come and save the day out come the Usos we haven't seen them since last July I think it was uh, when Jimmy got arrested for a DUI he obviously got uh, found not guilty of that in December and we've been wondering where they're going to come back to and it turns out they're coming back to Smackdown and that was it they were stood tall at the end of the day uh, the Usos and Roman Reigns uh, if this means the Usos are coming back to Smackdown that's a massive boon to the Smackdown tag team division because they are fantastic let's face it at the moment the WWE.com website still says that they are on Raw which is a little bit strange but I guess they've just changed their mind and they're kind of letting people forget about that they're on Smackdown now but we'll have to wait and see where they go next up CM Punk has obviously been doing a little bit of spring cleaning I guess and he's found some papers from back in the day he found the original uh, card that WWE had planned for Wrestlemania 30 and of course he decided to leak it on Instagram now I'm just gonna run down the card now and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, so in the main event, Batista versus Randy Orton for the WWE Heavyweight Championship. Then they had CM Punk versus Triple H. They had Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, obviously. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt, of course. And then they had Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. Uh, they also had Big Show versus Kane and Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose in a United States Championship match. Now, obviously, some of that stayed the same. And obviously, some of that was very, very, very different in the final WrestleMania 30. Uh, but if anyone actually believes that WWE had the plan for Daniel Bryan and his huge WrestleMania 30 victories uh, in their minds forever, yeah, they just didn't, did they? They were just going to put him against Sheamus again and probably lose it like 18 seconds on the pre-show or something. 
cool. There is a date on the piece of paper that you leaked and it says January the 20th, uh, 2014. So obviously plans do change, but this was what they had in mind originally. This was what they were planning to build towards. And I am very glad that they ended up going a very different way and turning it into pretty much the Daniel Bryan show. Uh, speaking of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, he was speaking to Cerrito Live and this was reported on Fightful.com. Uh, and he was asked if he believes Punk will return to the ring and he had quite an interesting uh, thing to say about it. I'm just going to read it out because it's easier. Uh, it's always so enticing to come back as much as you don't want to. I would hope that yes, Punk returns. In the back of my mind, even after he left, I always had this thing where it seemed to me where there should have always been a WrestleMania match between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Now at this point, he may be past that. I know he's not big on people putting his name out there and saying, I want to do this. That's not where I'm coming from with this at all. But in the back of my head, I was always disappointed he never got a CM Punk and Daniel Bryan WrestleMania match. Me too, Daniel Bryan. Me too. They obviously had some really good feuds and some great matches together, but that sort of big standout, look at us, this is what we represent, this is what we can do, WrestleMania moment worthy kind of match never came about, would have been good, would have been good. Moving on, we've got a bit more information about Vince's reaction to the wedding uh, between Lana and Bobby Lashley. He really loves this stuff, doesn't he? It was reported earlier on in the week that um, while Triple H and Kevin Dunn missed the show, Vince arrived backstage right before the show hit the air, but that's not actually true apparently um, because Jerry Lawler was on his podcast he was interviewing Rusev on it amazingly um, and he said this this thing was so good it was going to be so highly anticipated by everybody backstage Vince had some important meetings he doesn't do this often but lately I think with the upcoming XFL about to start and all that sort of stuff Vince has been torn in so many different directions and he's missed several wars and he's missed several smackdowns in the past few weeks. He actually left Hartford, Connecticut at two o'clock in the afternoon and everybody thought he was gone. Uh, so then he goes on to say that uh, since Vince had left the building, Lawler and a bunch of other people from Talent Relations moved into Vince's office because it's much bigger and much nicer. So why the hell wouldn't you? Um, but then at about 5.30 or so, someone comes in and says Vince is on his way back, so he had to clear out of the office. Um, and it turns out that he'd come back specifically to watch the wedding. So yeah, Jerry Lawler goes on to say, uh, yeah, Vince just came back just to make sure he was there for the wedding. Uh, and Rusev also commented saying that he heard this too and he didn't know if it was a rumor or not, but that speaks volumes about him because he is a big fan of weddings, speaking of Vince McMahon. So he'd gone out of his way, he'd have to left his office in Hartford, Connecticut to go and probably do some XFL meetings or something like that. He went out of his way to come back just so he could watch, not even be in the building where they're filming it, just so he could watch the Lana and Bobby Lashley wedding. Ah, good stuff, Vince. Speaking of weddings, Nikki Bella and I'm gonna have to read this because I'm probably gonna get it wrong, Artem Chigvintsev, Chigvintsev? Yep, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, put posts on Instagram saying that they are engaged. Nikki Bella wrote uh, that she's excited for 2020 and the next decade uh, with you, speaking of Artem, uh, heart emoji. And uh, I said yes in France in November. They've been trying to keep it a secret, but really wanted to share our excitement for the new year. So a big congratulations goes out to Nikki Bella and that guy. Uh, they met on Dancing with the Stars apparently, hit it off, and now they're getting married. Lovely stuff. And finally, uh, WWE have released the next guest for Stone Cold's Broken Skull Sessions podcast, and it's gonna be Kane! Uh, Glenn Jacobs, the mayor of Knox County, obviously, is gonna be on the podcast on Saturday, January 12th, straight after the NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2 show. So that should be fun. So that is the news for today. Uh, my name is Phil Chambers. You can follow me on Twitter at Fill my chambers. A quick personal shout out to Tamatanga. <laughs> you lost, you idiot. That's what you get for choking me out. Suck it. And yeah, I'm gonna go watch Wrestle Kingdom because Moxley versus Lance Archer is on right now, and I definitely, definitely want to see that. So goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, goodbye. Uh, subscribe, like, comment below. Do those things. Follow me. Twitter. Fill my chambers. Bye.